Hi, well today is the day we are taking out and dismantling the pond in the backyard. And we originally put in about a dozen white clouds, a dozen guppies, endlers, and then uh, two plecos. So very curious how many fish we pull out. Well, welcome back to the small scape. Take your guesses, your jot down on your notebook. How many do you think that we have of each? Do we have an even mix? Um, is it uh, totally teeming with fish? Do we have hundreds and hundreds, thousands? Or just a couple left? Note it down and we'll see what we have. Well, this is after I took out a majority of the water, which, uh, you know, hindsight's really great. Um, using a siphon doesn't work because it's a, kind of an in-ground pond, so the water just wouldn't go, you know, up with gravity and all. And I used a bucket. I could have used the pump, thinking back, to actually remove a lot of the water, but a small bucket worked out fine. Now you can tell there's a lot of green hair algae on the side. That was kind of my, my biggest uh, pet peeve with this pond. Next year, we'll see how we, we figure it out. But after a majority of the water was taken out, I did leave some water in along with the pump and the heater just in case there were some stragglers still in there. I wanna make sure I still got them and they were okay. And you can see a big blob of plants that I'm keeping in there. When I bring them in, I'll put them in a quarantine tank. And uh, the, a lot of the plants did really great. Now, this is a big pile of the rocks that were in the bottom area of the pond. I did put back the uh, the big rocks on the ledge area just to save some space but that's one thing I would also do differently I would not use big huge rocks in the bottom of the pond maybe just two or three maybe larger ones just to create that little stepping stone just in case some critters got in there they could get out but um, it just really causes a lot more work especially when you're trying to remove all of the fish which you want to be really careful when you're netting out fish because you can think you're just getting leaves and gunky stuff but there are little baby fish in there too so this is what was the time consuming process just weeding out all of the just to find the fish i had to get out all the leaves and the debris that got in there and in order to do that you have to everything that you pull out you have to very carefully sift make sure there are no little babies in there so it did take it probably took two to three hours to make sure everything was clear. But uh, yeah, I got everybody out. Now here they are. This is all of the fish that I got out of there. It may not look like that in this little container, but I would have to say a dozen or so white clouds turned into, my guess is maybe about three dozen conservatively. And the funny thing is, is how many guppies and endlers do you see? Probably not many because the numbers went down maybe only three or four i recall seeing maybe five and then one baby pleco you ask where's mom and dad pleco that's a great question they were nowhere to be found very weird but as you can see these white clouds there is just nothing like seeing fish especially these tropical fish that you usually stay you, you keep them inside and they have the artificial lighting there's just no comparison when they're actually outside so pretty there's my little baby pleco he is so cute and then that's a really large endler it's quite possible he ate all the other endlers probably not just kidding and then another really pretty endler there and then except for two or three baby little guppy mixes the rest of them are white clouds but they are so pretty shimmering in the sun and white clouds they are very common fish a lot of people keep them but i think until you keep them yourself you don't realize how absolutely stunning and beautiful they are and the little babies very very closely resemble like uh, some people have noted and i would have to agree little babies really resemble green neons because that little stripe along their body that's very kind of like fluorescent in neon it's just it's just so pretty. So this was a fun project having the pond out there and I'm anxious to do it next year to see what I do differently. Like I said the green hair algae was a big pain and then also having a lot of leaves fall into the pond I would cover it somehow. I'm gonna figure out maybe a different placement. Who knows? It's always fun to do different ponds each year especially when you keep it small. Of course this is kind of a larger pond for me 50 gallons but it was uh, 
a really great learning experience and just really fun to hang out by, a, by your own personal pond. So hopefully you like the video and uh, I will see you in the next one.